pleasure to be here today on this stage with each and every one of you. Each and every one of you is a patriot, and I mean that in this context. I know the folks who are helping us try to win this Senate race, and the only motivation you have is a desire to improve the United States of America for ourselves and our children and grandchildren. Yeah. And I want to thank each and every one of you for trying to put America first. Yeah. You are not here today because you want to profit from what the government may or may not do. Amen. You're not here today because you want money from the government in the form of subsidies or what have you. All you want is for a government that will be restrained in its exercise yes. that you can engage in your God-given right to liberty and freedom since you can determine for yourselves how to best take care of your families with your hard-earned money. Amen. And that's what we need more of. for liberty and freedom than Mr. Liberty and Freedom himself, I give you Senator Rand Paul. Great to be in Alabama. And you know what, Alabama? I got something I want to ask from you. Please don't send us weak sauce. That's right. <laughs> Some red hot Tabasco. Yeah. How important is this? Every day in the Senate, every day I'm up there, I run into these people. They're like furniture. They've been there forever, but you can take them from one side of the room and put them on the other side of the room. They're inanimate. They're not doing anything. They're there for power, for power's sake, but they're not there to do anything. I'll give you an example. How many Republicans remember somebody coming back from Washington and saying, well, oh, I'm for balanced budgets. Yeah, I'm conservative. We're not for more debt. That's what every Republican tells you, right? Yeah. And yet, we had a vote this week. On Wednesday, we voted for a budget that balances in five years. Why? Because the balanced budget amendment to the Constitution that every conservative across the land and every elected Republican says they're for, in fact, most of them in Washington, the Republicans, have voted for this amendment. We had a vote on the identical thing. It was my budget that would balance in five years. We got 29 Republicans, but we lost 18 big government Republicans. Oh. The one thing I know for sure is I've seen Mo Brooks' voting records. I know he's not afraid of leadership. That's right. They're not going to put him in the hot box where they turn the air conditioning off and they wait till blood's coming out of your ear. <laughs> and then they let you out and say, oh, now you're going to vote for big government. It won't work on Mo Brooks. <laughs> Seven is a and months and years and they say we're conservative but they don't vote that way you need somebody who has the courage of their convictions you need someone who will stand up to leadership and you will actually vote their principles I'll give you another example about two months ago I had a little amendment in committing to fire Fauci <laughs> We know what they stand for. They don't care about the debt. They don't care about life. They don't care about the Constitution. They don't care about your liberty. The problem is the Republicans. Six Republicans voted to keep Fauci. I had a great plan. I said, why don't we eliminate his position? And why don't we divide it in three so there'd be three people that would replace him, but none of them would be him. <laughs> Everything, my wife would be there to greet me. You know what she says when I come in the door? 
How come Fauci's not in jail yet? <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm very, I referred him to the Department of Justice for lying to Congress. It's a felony. You think Merrick Garland over there, President Biden's fans gonna prosecute? No, they're not doing their job. But the thing is, we've gotta have enough Republicans. So if I'm chairman of the committee, if we win in November and I'm chairman of a committee, I've got to have every Republican on the committee vote to give me subpoena power. So it makes a difference which Republicans we have on there. We have Republicans unwilling to challenge Fauci. In the beginning, it was only me. But here's how one person can make a difference. As we get on and on and on, many of them were afraid of their shadow, we finally got to a vote about a month ago on whether or not you can be forced by the CDC to wear a mask on an airplane. We won that vote with every Republican and seven Democrats because we persevered. So we need some cayenne pepper. <laughs> we need some red hot Tabasco salt. We don't need more people who want to go up there to get along with everybody. We need a the warrior. The system needs shaken up. And the thing is, is look, your other candidate may be a nice person, but the thing is, what Washington needs is someone's going to fight the yes. system. Yes. Someone who's the courage of their convictions. Someone who believes that our liberty comes from our Creator and the job of government is to protect the world. come forward as a Biden nominee who came forward and said to me, this is a, a, a man who now believes she's a woman who's in charge of HHS, when she came forward and she said this, the question I asked was a very specific question. If your 13-year-old girl is being given testosterone enough to grow a beard by the school teachers and by the school nurse without your permission, are we for letting the government do that against the will of the parents? No. She wouldn't no. answer the question. No. She wouldn't answer the question. But I was calling all kinds of names, transphobic this, transphobic that. I didn't say a word about the adult that made this foolish decision, I think. But I will stand up for our kids, and I know Mo will stand up for our kids as yes. well. and then they say, oh, well, they'll be afraid to say anything. You know what? Someone has to stand up and say it's wrong to put the black kids on one side and the white kids on the other side. Didn't we fight for generations not to separate people based on race? Mm -hmm. People teaching that crap to our kids, which would make Martin Luther King roll over his grave, should stand up and say, we don't want critical race theory in our schools. There's yes. a very good chance to do that. I wouldn't be here if I thought he couldn't. The publicity of the poll showing it to be, oh, we can't win. There was a poll this week showing that within the margin of error in people who usually vote, who are the people who usually vote? You are the people who usually vote. But he's not going to win if just you show up. You're going to have to go out. If each one of you get 10 people, he has a chance. Or if each one of you get 100 people, you have to go out and call people and say, there's only one conservative in this race. Why is the entire establishment, the entire establishment, we're talking about tens of millions of dollars being spent because you've got red hot Tabasco yep. and cayenne pepper, and he's not going to go along to get along because he's going to stand up to leadership. That's what we want. But you won't get it unless you get out and vote because they are organized. I've sat at tables with them in Washington. They are laughing to death because you know what they think? We've got a rubber stamp. We're going to get a rubber stamp to go up there and do what that person is told by leadership. Leadership spreads millions of dollars around, but they don't do it for anybody that's independent in spirit. They don't do it with anybody who has profound beliefs. 
We are an incredibly lucky country. This is a great country. One of the questions that John Kennedy from Louisiana will ask him, and he's probably the funniest of all of a <laughs> I think he was, you know, I'm educated somewhere, you know, either UVA or Vanderbilt or whatever. He's got a great education, but sometimes it kind of plays the hall. Like, you know, <laughs> so these federal judges will come in there and they'll think, he's going to ask me about the precedent of some sort of law case from 200 years ago. And he looks at him and he says, well, you think America's a good place or a bad place? Pretty simple question. And you know, they, they don't know what to say. Because everyone on the left is saying America's a terrible place. Yeah. That everybody's racist and everybody hates each other based on their race. I think the opposite has been happening. I'm almost 60 years old. Every decade's gotten better. Am I saying it's perfect? No. But I see intermarriage. I see inter integration in churches. I see voluntary association. I see a much better place than it was 60 years ago. I think it's not perfect. But I think we're getting better. We're not getting... Unfortunately, once everybody started talking about race again, all of a sudden, now it was about race. I thought it was about who people were and whether they're a good person or not. <laughs> but it doesn't mean we should shy away from talking about things like Black Lives Matter. The woman who runs it has bought four million dollar homes. She doesn't believe in a wall on the southern border, but she's building a wall around her homes to keep the riffraff out of her. What is she for? Her name is Patrice Delors. What is she for? My wife found this on the internet. It's her talking to a young woman. Comes up to her and it's being videoed and they're just sort of giggling and laughing and the young lady says, oh, I loved your book. It reminded me so much of Mal's Little Red Book. <laughs> Yeah. Mao killed 50 million people. So this woman is either willfully ignorant of history or evil. One of the two. But to giggle that your book sounds like Mao's little red book? Yeah. We were attacked in Washington. I was at the White House. You were probably there that night too. For the RNC convention at the White House that night. There was a mayhem everywhere. Black Lives Matter was having a protest. And they don't represent, I think, everybody who has a darker colored skin. These are socialist, radical Marxists, and violent people. Right. Yeah. My wife and I came out. We couldn't get across the street. There was a mob, and they said, don't go. So we actually didn't go. People said, why did you go into that? We didn't. We got on a bus with an armed escort. We went all the way around, but we still had to get back to our hotel. And ultimately, we did have to cross paths. And as we did, a mob came around the corner chanting and yelling and then yelling my name and saying we've got him, which is not a good thing to hear. <laughs> First there was 10, then there was 20, then there was 50, then there was over 100 people spitting on us, calling my wife foul names and saying they were going to kill us. We thought we would die. We make it to a corner and there are three policemen there. We're like this close to them. They're throwing fluid on us, they're all unknown fluid, they're throwing, you know. It was, a, it was a very scary time. It's the only time I ever put my mask on or something that wouldn't make me <laughs> But here's the thing. This isn't about race. The people who defended us and saved our lives that night, there were three policemen there that were brave and stood strong. Two out of three of them were black. It isn't about race. When I tell this to the cops who are black, and there are a lot of black policemen in my state as well, they say it's about right or wrong. It isn't about race. It's about you stand up whether you believe that it ultimately is a real right and wrong. There's I'm glad you came out here today for Mo Brooks. I hope you will work hard in the last couple of days. Call into radio programs, do what you can, call your neighbors, uh, talk to Mo's campaign and the organizers here to see if you can be officially making phone calls for them. Runoffs are funny things. Yeah. Ted Cruz got second in his primary and first in his runoff. My dad, many years ago in the 70s, got second and then got first in a runoff in a special election. <laughs> They're much smaller elections, so you've got to get the energy, you've got to take the energy from today and turn out the vote. Thank you so much and good luck in the election.